So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Eddie Gonzalez. I'm the Director of Partnerships and Grants uh, with the MPS Chesapeake Gateways Office uh, based in Annapolis. Uh, we're a community assistance office that provides uh, technical and financial assistance to a uh, network of various different partners across the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Uh, we're putting this program together as part of our application process for a grant program that we, or a series of grants that we currently have open. Uh, you'll learn more about that uh, further down in the presentation. Uh, we did do a presentation on uh, the grant opportunity that we have available, and I'll have a link to that further down as well. Uh, so there'll be an opportunity for you to go back and get more specifics on the uh, grants that we have available uh, at present. What I wanted to focus on today, uh, because this will be the second year that we do uh, uh, offer a grant application, and I wanted to put this presentation together based on some of the things that I saw in the last round uh, to help you be more competitive and to really make sure that uh, we're getting a, a good representation of the need that exists in the watershed. So if you've done logic modeling before, this is going to be a very basic walkthrough. I, I only have about 45 minutes, to 50 minutes to cover this topic. Uh, you know, this is a, a, a topic that people go to graduate school for. When I was in graduate school, I did a whole semester long class uh, on program development and logic modeling. So what I'm presenting to you is by no means uh, uh, everything there is about logic modeling. Uh, but I did want to give you enough to uh, point you in the right direction and show you how, as a program developer and a project developer, this is a useful tool. So what is a logic model? Let's just start with that. A logic model is a graphic representation of something that you're trying to accomplish. You get an idea, you need to put some uh, uh, organization to that idea. So a logic model is a way to put those ideas into some sort of plan. Uh, in its structure, it relates your goals, your objectives, the resources that you're going to be working with, the activities that you're going to be doing, and the outputs and outcomes that result from those activities that all together um, cum uh, accumulate to define some sort of impact. Now that's very important because just to give a little context as to why we would be focused on impact, I mentioned we are in our second grant cycle uh, that we just announced last month, uh, the deadline's November 3rd. Looking back at our last grant cycle, uh, we had a little more funds available. So we were fortunate that our first year out, we were able to uh, have $2.3 million in funding, but we ended up getting 87 applications, totaling $9 million in requests. So right out the gate from our very first uh, grant offering, uh, we quadrupled the requests uh, than, the, uh, than the amount of available funding that we had. That sets up a very competitive uh, scenario where we really have to look at where investments are going to be best made? Where can we really count on uh, the impact coming in for the investment that we're going to be making? And that gets passed on to you in the application where the all we have to go by is what the reviewers are going to be reading in the application. We have an eight-page limit. So within eight pages, you have to try to tell us why your project over somebody else. And if you can't define that impact in a way that lets us know why we should choose your project, it makes it less competitive. So a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today is your ability to really put some definition around a, a, an idea you might have in order to emphasize that impact. I'm gonna be referencing uh, a lot of terms uh, throughout this whole presentation that I'm defining here. So goals, and we'll, we'll have more definition for each of these as part of an, the exercise that we're gonna do, but just so that everybody starts off in the same place, uh, goals define the overall purpose of a project. You have a big idea, there's going to be a statement related to that big idea. The objectives, that's where you start breaking your goals down into individual steps, and your objectives are those the definition of those steps. Resources, this is your starting point. Uh, it's also sometimes called inputs, all the things that you have to work with. Some of them are physical, some of them uh, are things like contact information, uh, any work that's been done uh, ahead of time would all count in the resource category. Activities is the what will be done and the how will it be done parts of the project. 
The outputs then are what you would expect to see as a result of the activity. And there's gonna be some nuances here I'll explain as we go uh, further down into the, uh, these terms. But for right now, you know, the outcomes is a result of the activity, or excuse me, the output is a result of an activity. The outcomes are then the benefits and uh, aggregated results of your outputs. And then all of that connects back to some statement that you can make uh, related back to your goal statement about whether you accomplished what you set out to accomplish. So very generically, those are the terms that we're going to be utilizing it. Uh, and I mentioned earlier, this is a graphic representation. So I'm going to put up an example here that uh, I pulled from the Centers of D Disease Control because it really highlights the, the pictorial that I want you to all to start uh, having in your head, where you're mapping out a project based on all these different components to make sure that you are addressing every one of them. If you end up with a box that has a big hole, that means that hole is going to be pretty apparent in the proposal as well. So the more you can use this logic model to fill in the different components, the easier it's going to be for you to turn that into a narrative. Uh, and especially if you end up with a page limit like ours with eight, uh, you want to be as succinct as possible without sacrificing any definition uh, or uh, clarity. So uh, we're going to be working through our own logic model in a second, but I wanted to give you this sense because I like the way they put it here where it's the logic model either represents your planned work or your intended results. And if you're deficient in either, it'll make it hard for a reviewer to know why yours over somebody else. So I want you to keep it, that in mind. It's just as important, just as important as it is to talk about the work, the, the physical, what are you going to do? It's just as important to talk about uh, what do you expect to get from that uh, a, a, as the definition of the return on investment. And then they also set it up as a series of this if then statements. If you have these resources, you can do these activities. If you do these activities, you get these. Uh, outputs. If you get these outputs, they can aggregate into these outcomes. If somewhere along the way, you're not clear as to how you're going to get to the next step, that tells you something about maybe where there's a gap in your, in, in your project plan uh, why, and why this, to me, becomes a really good tool to help you de uh, develop your concept. So one of the things that uh, you know, I've learned in reading a lot of proposals over the years is a lot of people tend to focus most of their uh, words in the resources and activities section. They think that if they describe to the nth degree what they're going to do, that I may not be so uh, observant about what is intended based on that work. And for a lot of projects, you get really jazzed about what you're going to do that uh, especially when you have an eight page limit, things start getting very uh, loosely defined in the why and the how will this benefit. So whereas a reviewer, they're looking at the entire eight pages. And if there's something missing from this, it's gonna get reflected in your scores. If you spent seven and a half pages telling us to the nth degree, how you're gonna, uh, you know, all the 30 activities that you're gonna do related to your project, and only give us uh, you know, half a paragraph on why this is so important, uh, it really sets up an inequity in what the reviewers are able to discern as far as this being an investment. So just remember both sides of what a reviewer is looking at, the, the work and the intended results, both need to be captured within a proposal. So I want to go ahead and jump into the tool itself, logic model. And, and there's a if you Google it uh, or uh, do a search, you'll get a number of different formats for this. But they all basically uh, segment a project into the components that we've talked about. There's a link here uh, that we'll put in the chat uh, where you can uh, download a blank template that's provided by uh, Health and Human Services. Um, you'll see it's a little different than what I did here. But uh, because I, I, I want to show you more detail within the exercise we're going to go through. Uh, but you, you can just uh, search for logic model template, uh, and there's a lot of um, templates that you can pull. Now, there are programs that you could buy if you're really going to get into program development, and this is something that your organization is going to do a lot of. There are programs and applications that allow you to do this and integrate it with your own systems. 
Uh, but you know, for the purposes of today, I just want you to, to see this uh, as a picture. And then we're gonna be filling in all the different pieces. Now, but I did put the links so that as we're going through, we're gonna go through a fictitious scenario, but as we're going through that, I'd like you, if uh, you're able, to start making notes on a project you might have in mind. And as I'm going through mine, feel free to drop in the chat, you know, goal statements that you're toying with right now. Uh, as we go through the different boxes, you know, throw in some of the things that you would consider in, in those categories and start, you know, sketching out a, uh, a logic model for the, pr the project or program that you're thinking about. Uh, and that way you can come out of this having some notes on, um, on where you might be pointed. Uh, I'm not able to provide project specific guidance while we have a, an open grant opportunity. Uh, but, you know, because this is being made available to everybody, as you are following along, you should be in a position to uh, utilize my examples to come up with your uh, versions of, of what we're talking about. So take a look at that link. Um, and I mentioned this as a picture because how I see this picture is when you're looking at all the different components of a project, you know, the goal statement to me is the heart statement. You saw something, you saw a need, it, you, it, it really hit you in a way where all of a sudden you're thinking, hey, I have skills or my organization has capacity. There's something here that I think we could do. There's some, some change in the world we want to see at whatever scale you're viewing. You know, so to me, that comes across as a, as a heart statement. You're, you're putting something out there that is a, a challenge for you to accomplish. Then you get down to the objectives, resources, and activities. This is the things that you can uh, metaphysically touch and feel. It's the, the physical stuff that you have available to you. It's the databases, it's the plans, it's the expertise, uh, including dollars. You know What you're putting together in a proposal is the dollar figure that would go in this resources box. If without the dollar, you don't get any of the logic model done. Uh, but without the logic model, it's hard to know whether those dollars, how they're going to be utilized. So, um, but resources is one of the things that you're looking for um, uh, in a, submitting an application. Those things then lead to the outputs. And for me, the outputs are what you can see. If you do an activity, and it might not be physically see, but it's where you're, you're, you're seeing a direct result of what you propose to do. Now, we're still one step from the big picture. Outcomes is then what I see as the big picture. This is where you take everything that you're seeing and you're starting to make the connections as to whether you did uh, move towards accomplishing that goal or in that thought process think that, well, we fell short because of X, Y, or Z. The point of the project is both to get to success, but also understand where there, why there wasn't success. And ideally it's iterative, you'd go back in. But without this plan, you wouldn't know one way or the other, or at least be able to communicate it. So think about that, uh, you know, those differentiations as we go through each of the different components. And then at the end, what you want to be able to do is, is these big picture observations you're making at the outcome level, that should then tell you some, uh, whether you can authentically say your goal has been met. Uh, and that connects the outcomes back up to, you know, the, the mind to the heart is how I'm graphically showing it here. So you all have your, you, you, uh, a sample to go through. You can start keeping your own notes. But uh, in order to jump into this, uh, you know, I want to paint a little bit of scenario just to, and this is going to be a very rudimentary example, really to highlight the different components. This is by no means a complete project. Uh, it's really just meant to highlight some of the moving pieces so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but the scenario I want to pose is that, say you're an outfitter, uh, you uh, are you provide kayaking and fishing equipment to users of all different kinds. That's kind of your niche. Uh, you recognize the value both economically and, and recreationally. That's the space that you occupy. You go home on a, a holiday visit, you go to one of your hometown beaches, and you see a scene play out in front of you that puts you in a reminiscent state of mind. You're seeing some uh, bones there of some things that used to exist. Uh, it's bringing you back to when you were a child and how you used to use this uh, uh, area. And you know the first thing you notice is it's not how it used to be or it's not being utilized how it could be. So that gets you thinking 
uh, hey, that's uh, there's there's something to work with here. And I'm purposely not naming anything because this is supposed to be a, a, a totally um, uh, uh, fictitious scenario. So uh, for now, this is just some place that you connect with uh, as somebody that has this idea. So you have this idea, but you want to start putting some definition behind this idea. It's not enough to go to a donor and say, hey, wouldn't it be great if, you know, and unless you have a, a, a wealthy family member that that's what they, they're into, uh, you, you're going to have to put some definition to this idea if you're going to want to get a donor interested. So let's go back to the logic model and, and see how this works as a tool. So the first thing we want to do is turn this idea that you have, this, this aspiration that's come into your head, into something that you can work towards, create something on the horizon. So you want to develop a goal. Now, a, a quick definition, because in a lot of proposals, goals and objectives are used interchangeably, and they are not. And we, it, it, you'll see later on in our um, notice of opportunity, we ask you to define the goals and define the objectives. And if you're using them interchangeably, it tells us that one, you don't know the difference, and two, you don't know how one leads to another. And if I'm deciding between two, I'm going to choose the one that's got more clarity. So. I want to make sure that everybody is clear. You know, the goal represents that larger, what are we trying to accomplish? The objective is that goal breaking, broken down into its actionable pieces. You could have a goal that has one objective because the, the way the goal is uh, uh, defined, you just need one actionable piece to get done. Or you can have a goal that the goal itself seems pretty simple, but actioning it is going to involve 10 separate objectives that you need to make sure you can adequately define. And I'll show you the difference in, uh, in making sure that your goals and objectives match up as we get into the exercise. Uh, but again, your the goal is the, the, the larger level observation of what you're trying to do. The objectives is then the components uh, and scope. The goals tend to be broader, have loftier, sometimes less measurable goals like um, foster awareness or uh, increase appreciation for or um, uh, uh, increase the competency of versus objectives become specifically definable. Uh, you're going to create this program or you're going to write this manual. Uh, you're going to engage this partner. Those things become, that's why I had it represented by the hands. That's things that I can get my hands around uh, metaphysically. Uh, and then the specificity, the detail level, the objectives is where you would be defining uh, the individual steps, but your goal really is that statement you're gonna come back to, to say, hey, this is the picture I had in my head. And, and now that I'm looking at, after the project, I can say one way or the other, whether you met the picture in your head. All right, so let's go back to this, this uh, you know, what, what got us interested in, in pursuing a project idea, you know, the sense that there's something here where we could contribute. And the goal that we've decided on for the purpose of this exercise is the goal of this project is to foster community fishing and recreation on the water. You saw a resource, you thought, you know, had more utility to it. You came with an idea that reflects things that you have expertise in or an aspiration uh, to impact, and you've created a goal statement around that. This doesn't tell us anything about the how or you know who, it just says the where we wanna end up. You know, you're imagining a scenario where this location is being used in some way. So from the goal, what would be some breakout objectives, do we think, uh, based on this goal? What could you see as actionable things that would need to happen as then objectives in breaking this goal down? Anybody want to chime in or put something in the, in the chat? If you think about what would it take to, you know, with that starting point, that image that I had, what would you see as in between steps from this goal to uh, things that you would need to action? So if you start thinking about this goal and where the uh, moving pieces are, some of the things that I would break down is, 
do I own the land? If I don't, somewhere in this, uh, there needs to be some arrangement with whoever does own the land. Uh, get their buy-in, decide this is something that they want to uh, partner with. You're willing to do the work, but this would create its own action. Um, installing the fishing pier, yes. Construct the pier and kayak launch. That would be a, a step in that. Um, and, and this could be broken out into any number. Uh, so a lot of the, the offer learn to fish programs, that might be more in the activity section. So you might be, uh, say, uh, provide access opportunities would be the objective. And then, or if learn to fish is a very specific thing that comes with its own infrastructure, your objective could be, uh, you know, install a learn to fish program in the objectives. We'll get to some of that uh, variations in a second. Um, but yeah, a lot of those kinds of things. Uh, if you want to have a, a predetermined message that you are going to want to emphasize through this, that could be an objective. Um, you know, anything that becomes an actionable part of this project that reinforces that goal will be in the objectives. So now let's talk about resources related to that. Sorry, I jumped the, the clicker there for a second. Uh, but you know, feel free to jump in with other things on resources. So some of the things I was seeing related to this list of objectives is, you know, contact information for the landowner. You know, your resources are that specific where it's, what do I have to work with? Are you cold calling somebody or do you already have a relationship with them? That is a resource that you need to know where that resource is at any given time. The budget, I mentioned this is where you're going to be you put in a dollar number to this need and turning that into a proposal that you'd be applying for grant funds to support, but you'd still have some sense of uh, what it's going to take to pull this project off. Within this specific example, you know, in order to come up with a budget, you're going to want to get some estimates uh, so that you can come up with the uh, realistic uh, estimations of what should go in a budget. Uh, and then you'd have all of the construction materials and supplies that you're going to need to eventually conduct this program. You get the grant funds, that's going to open up a whole bunch of things that then you would have to acquire to fill in this resources section. All right, I'm going I'm to wait before I click on the next one. So now with this in mind, we're going into activities. Now think about then, I've started breaking it up into lines of work. So you can kind of see how these are matching up, but they don't necessarily need to match up. You know, you may have three objectives, but you have five activities that you're going to need to do to support them. Uh, in some of the logic model formats, they will connect all the different things that are connected, and that can help you. You can have a project that's got 30 objectives, and you're really needing to map the resources related to specific objectives. And uh, so these things can get very complicated, uh, but at a minimum, you want it to track the, the big picture things that each category represents. So for activities, uh, what would be something here based on resources and objectives that we've already defined that might come into play? Yep, secure an agreement with the landowner, exactly. What about the location itself? Do you just show up with the with the truck full of materials and start unloading and uh, you know everybody gets a hammer, you have permits? Yep. So you start thinking about okay, what happens next? And this is where you start coming up with a, a game plan for your project that helps you uh, eventually turn all this into a narrative. You think about what what are the component activities that need to happen. Uh, in order for everything to get moved forward to an output. So an agreement with the landowner, conducting a site analysis, and then the actual construction. Uh, now, from here, this is where I was saying, this is the, the, the hands-on stuff, the, the stuff that's gonna get done, uh, the things that you're gonna accumulate and, and assemble uh, in order to do these activities and get you to uh, being able to move towards that goal. Now we're moving into uh, having to define outputs and outcomes. I will say this is another one where people either use them interchangeably or they only talk about the activity and never reference outputs and outcomes. An example I give is uh, if your project is to make sure that um, 
uh, kids have a water-based experience because there's a population, uh, a community that's never been in a kayak. So you could have a program that just kid gets kids on a kayak. The activity is the physically having them kayak, but what you're trying to measure is who then did that activity? What, you know, your ability to produce a, a dock and have kayaks available, that was the project. You could say, hey, you, you're done with the project. But if your goal is really those kayaks being used, your project's not over until you can make sure that there's uses for that, that there's people there to, to use that. So let's th look at, think a little bit about outputs and outcomes so that you can see the difference and why uh, that's important. So an output is the result of an activity. It follows directly uh, after the activity box. This is what you would intend to see based on uh, the, the, the activities that are being done. And how I ask people uh, about thinking about the difference between those is, you know, if you're doing trail work, is the goal the creation of the trail or the use of the trail? You know, if you want to say something about the need for people to have outdoor experiences and your project really only creates a trail, you're not going to be able to make statements of impact about its use unless the project involves some way of having the trail be used. Uh, same with interpretive programs. It, your project could be that they're just there's a need for a certain type of interpretive program and you want to make it available to museums or uh, science centers around the, the watershed. Okay, then your goal would likely end with producing the program and disseminating it. You're not really, you can't really be focused on how it's going to get used because that's out of your control. But if you say that your goal is to develop a program and have it be used by a specific group of people, and that's not part of your project design, it, you know, the reviewers are going to note that. So you, with the outputs and the outcomes, you want to be clear on what do you see as the intended result of the activity? And then what will that cumulatively, cumulatively uh, uh, aggregate up into as far as impact. All right, I, I know there's a lot, so let's get back to the logic model so you can see then the outputs here would then be what you could physically see after you've done all these activities is people actually using the pier for fishing, people actually using uh, the kayak launch to recreate on the water. All right, that is what you're physically observing within uh, this project design. But that's just telling you numbers and the day that you're looking. What you want to be able to say in the outcome level, uh, and this is that bigger picture, is that now because of this, not only did you observe people using it the day that you were there, you can now say that because this peer is available and accessible and open, that the community has a reliable, accessible, on-demand peer for fishing. And the community has a reliable, accessible, on-demand kayak launch for recreation. As long as it's accessible and re you know, reliable, meaning it's well-constructed, it's going to uh, last, uh, and you know anybody can use it at, at, as they need, you can start looking back at your goal statement. Based on what we define here, would you say that we, we've met our goal statement? So I would say yes, but a big picture of it is that the trick is then also, what are you measuring? In this case, it was easy to see what we'd be able to measure how many people are using it for fishing, how many people are using it for kayaking. Now say on day one, nobody uses it. Day 30, you're still not having anybody use it. There would be something missing. You couldn't just leave the project there. If your goal was to foster community fishing and recreation, something else is going on that's keeping the community from using a free, accessible, open to the public resource, you'd have to go back in. You know That wasn't part of your original project and this is why these logic models are so important. It lets you know if there is more there. Uh, you know, we're gonna give you funding for a specific period of performance to do something specific, but you're gonna be the ones that determine whether you were successful. Uh, and then let us know whether you're successful and you know, potentially if there's something more that then you would need to address. So the what is measurable here, um, right, need marketing and education for the public to know. There might be some additional step that you hadn't considered 
Uh, and so this is a good lead in. Thanks, Jeff, because this is a good lead in to then what I want to talk about next. Uh, but before that, what we're discussing here is then connecting back to can we authentically say that we have met our heart statement by uh, the, the, what, our, what we're seeing in a big picture? But going back to, to Jeff's comment about needing more, say there is more, or uh, I want to tweak the goal statement a little bit and see what that does to our logic model. What if instead of the community, what if we we set out to that our goal is to foster fishing and recreation on the water by local high school students? Is there anything in this logic model that would allow us to say at the outcome level that we think we have met this goal? What do you, is there anything you see missing from what we had already defined that would then address this added element of the logic model? Originally, this was written for the community. We have now changed it to a very specific part of the community, right? The activities focused on the audience. And it's not just the activity, the entire logic model then needs another level of specificity to look at that individual uh, 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 specificity for the audience. So if we're going, let's go all the way back to objectives. We need to engage a local high school in this project, right? Introducing it to the schools, exactly. These things, I talk, I've mentioned this a lot when we do the, the, the grant presentations that this is not a, if we build it, they will come. If you want, a certain uh, group of people to visit your uh, or participate, uh, and you're putting that as part of your goal statement, then you need to make sure that engaging them is part of your plan. So on resources, uh, you know, you need to add the high school contacts. Uh, it, are they gonna, is this something new to them? How much are you gonna have to talk to to get them on board? And then the physical additional resource you would need of transporting them uh, to the location, if that's something that's going to be part of the of the plan. You know, on the activity side, it's actually arranging that trip. You know, or letting them know the you know leaving them with marketing information. Whatever is going to get you that high school component needs to then be built in, all the way through. You know that then now you're observing students using it. You know, if you didn't bring them and you expected them to come on their own and you don't see them there, but your goal statement says references local high school students, you're not going to get to an outcomes version that's going to have the, the local high school students as something you can adequately say you accounted for. But by adding this additional element, now you can add that students have a reliable, accessible way to access the water. And that ties back to our goal of fostering fishing and recreation uh, by local high school students. As long as that we've observed the high school students coming, we've set up a scenario where they were fully aware of the project along the way. Um, now you can confidently say that you've set up this project to achieve that goal. All right, uh, we're gonna move one into one more example of, of uh, changing this up a little. We're not gonna go through the whole thing, but Say we want to add and learn about coastal ecology. Again, it, looking at what we've defined here, could we, with just what's written here, say that uh, confidently our goal statement could be met? I got one answer. All right. Yeah, again, for the same reason as the other, uh, as, as adding local high school students, if you add even more specificity to your goal, your project plan needs to address, uh, address the project to that level of specificity. Exactly. So what people are already putting in there, you need to go all the way back and really down, dissect the entire logic model on that extra caveat with what would be the added component. For objectives, you need an objective to provide a coastal ecology interpretive program. You need the staff and the, the present the program itself to exist if it doesn't already. Then you need to be able to provide it. You've arranged the school trip. You have the interpreter there. They've got a, a curriculum already ready to go. Boom, that's the activity. 
Now you can say that you've observed students kayaking while listening to an interpretive program. And the expectation is that the students have learned about coastal ecology. Now, this is where I'm going to bring back this little uh, statement I mentioned earlier. How do we measure this? Uh, you're the, going to be the one that's telling us whether the outcomes are met and having some way of explaining how you measured that will be important in you, your, your ability to authentically say you've met uh, those outcomes. I mentioned in these terms because what I do see a lot is very lofty goal statements that include a lot of different things that they want to impact because they're written in a way to meet the theme of the proposal. You know, you want us to say, oh, hey, this project fits because look at our goal statement. We're reaching underserved, we're reaching, you know, this specific population. But when I read your, your project plan, it doesn't mention anything about how or why, you, uh, uh, how or what you're gonna to do to get to those people. So you know, I, I will caution you, write the goal statements within the capacity that you feel you're gonna be able to provide a project plan to support. If all you could do is really rely on the fact that you think you could foster community fishing and recreation within this uh, uh, location, then define the project as that. Don't try to define it as more then it will, because if we see this statement that includes local high school students and referencing to coastal ecology, and that isn't referenced anywhere in the project, it will get uh, rated lower versus a project that everything supports the, the original goal, goal statement. So that's the logic model side of how this is used as a tool. It breaks down your project into what are all the things that I got? I have to make sure uh, I've built in uh, to the project design that then I can convey in the narrative of a proposal to let the reviewers know I have thought of how all of these things add up to cumulative impact. And it's that impact that I want you to gauge whether my proposal is worth investing. Uh, these The questions I ask myself is, is the goal to do the building or is the goal to have the building used? Is the goal to uh, you know, have a, um, a map or is the goal to have, to have the map be used? So you always wanna be thinking about uh, what is the outcome that you are intending to ensure and make sure that your goal statement reflects that. Now, I do want to then connect it. We've got about 20 minutes left. And if there's any questions, I'm taking them as we go. So feel free to drop in questions in the chat. Uh, I've got the box open here so I can look along. But uh, you know, just to show you how this would be then applied to a particular grant opportunity, these are the specifics about our grant. Again, I put the link there for the announcement. You can click on that. Um, if we can put that in the chat, uh, that'll that's the presentation where we walk through the actual application. So I'm not gonna to go too deep into the um, specifics of our grant opportunity, but this is the summary. I'll highlight that it, it does focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility, and community engagement. It does have two grant themes. Both of those have languages related to those cat, uh, topics that we wanna see in your proposal. Um, a lot of the proposals this last cycle said they were gonna reach underserved and made no reference to who the underserved was, even if you don't know where these folks are, you still don't use terms that you don't have a sense of um, how those terms uh, have, provide context to your project. Because a reviewer can tell whether when you've thrown something in just as, as a term, uh, you know, as um, jargon. So, uh, and I'll, I'll provide more examples there. But to start with a grant proposal, for us, we're very clear that it has to have a public purpose. Your logic model should show that there is a public uh, benefit uh, outcome that you're going to be able to uh, ensure in the definition of the project. And your goal statement uh, should infer some public benefit. We are also in our proposal, this isn't guesswork. We're very clear in our proposal that we want uh, in the narrative purpose, goal, objectives, the link to the strategic themes, a sense of your deliverables. These are those outputs and, and the outcomes. 
what is going to happen when you uh, uh, produce those activities. And then other specifics, key tasks and milestones, all of those things let us know that you have mapped this project out. If you can't sequence your project from day one to end of day for the project, you don't have to have it all ultimately, you know, down to the day, but you know, you should give us a sense. Certain things are going to take a couple of months. Certain things take a month. Um, those things then by mapping all this out gives you a sense of what needs to happen first. You needed to get the permission of the landowner before you could start construction. A timeline would show, even though it was the activities were all on one box, your timeline would show these two months are landowner negotiation. This month is site prep. These five months are construction. That lets us know that you've, you're putting things in sequence. All right. And then the other place where a lot of this comes into play is the review criteria, where we've given you all the answers to, as to what the reviewers are going to look for uh, within the different criteria that they're going to be uh, rating you against. The very first one, it's a quarter of the whole uh, rating for us. The projects need to uh, connect to the Chesapeake Bay Initiative Act and the Chesapeake Bay Initiative Act, which defines our office, says that our programs and things that we support are meant for enhancing public education of and access to the Chesapeake Bay. So whatever your project is, in the need that you're representing, it's got to be defined within the context of uh, public access or public education of the Bay. Now, fortunately, that's very interpretable. You're, you're really just emphasizing the Chesapeake Bay part of this, but you know you should be able to easily come up with an idea that fits within public education or public access of. Um, you know, the, 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 this language is not written to be uh, restrictive. Uh, it's just meant to be defining. Within the second criteria, connection to the strategic themes. Again, we offer two for you to choose from. We ask you to provide uh, goals and objectives. Those goals and objectives should be written with the Chesapeake Bay in mind. And when we say Chesapeake Bay, we mean the watershed. Also, just to be clear, not, not the, just the waterway. So it's the entire watershed connection to. So within this one, it's do the goals and objectives then further define one of the two strategic themes. Um, just like with the goal statement, you want to be careful not to try to kitchen sink uh, your connection to the strategic themes, because if you mention a connection that you're not then defining in the, in the activities, they will see that as a negative. So just be authentic about, we're going to focus on this one part of this strategic theme and do our whole project to ensure success in that one part. Uh, and as long as it's clear and connected, you should do okay. Equity, inclusion, accessibility, and engagement is its own criteria element. So if, if you know you want to be competitive by making sure that yours has a, a DEIJA component to it, make sure that that's referenced somewhere in the plan. It can't just be, we're going to do this, and then your project plan is devoid of any reference to how you're going to do this. Now I'll go back then within this example, let's go back to the logic model we, we created. If, you, if we had added the word underserved to the goal statement, that would have added a whole nother level of, of uh, responsibility we have in designing the project to make sure that we have a way of addressing that goal statement, that part of the goal statement. So when you're talking about underserved, you're defining who is the underserved for us. But if you don't define it, we would have no way of knowing what you mean. And it's just going to come across as you wrote that in because you thought it'd be something we'd be looking for. Uh, but we don't just need that. We need the plan for how to how to how to get to that. Oh, sorry. Let me go back. I was trying to scroll through the chats here. Um, uh, measure evaluate. Uh, so it's thanks for that question about uh, measurement and evaluation, I, uh, Megan. I did mean to say at the very beginning that logic modeling uh, is used a lot by evaluators because this is how you then can break a project down to document that it has been successful. And we're talking here within the, the scope of what you think you can impact. But if you're talking government agencies like Centers for Disease Control, where they're trying to eradicate certain diseases across a whole continent, you need to have some surety 
because everything breaks down into smaller components. And as something breaks down and doesn't meet its a, 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 uh, intended goals, that gets cascades all the way down. So this kind of tool is very critical for evaluators that really success of certain parts of our planet depend on whether we know that goals have been accomplished or not. Um, so, but as far as the metrics and how to measure, that really depends on the type of activity that you're trying to do. Um, you know, there are definitely resources you can go to. There's consultants that that is 100% their thing, uh, where they just live in the evaluation part of your project. Um, you know, it's hard to go into it at this stage of where we're at. It would be part of, need to be part of your project to, to, uh, discussing how to do that. But, um, you know, I would think find reports of similar programs. Go to see if you can find uh, an analysis that was done of something similar and uh, look at their report and see what their, their measurement tools were and some of the outcomes that they were able to define and see how that could be translated in, in what you're trying to do. Uh, and a lot of times for at the level that we're looking at, Again, you don't have to overly complicate this. This doesn't mean bringing in a university and, and setting up a special grant or a contract for them to evaluate it. Uh, that's not to say you couldn't do that if you had that relationship, but, um, but it's really just making the purposeful connection between what you're seeing and what you're aggregating because a lot of projects will actually end at the activity. They just describe what they wanna do. They don't describe then what they expect to have happen as a result of that, or even how that aggregates into impact. Um, and uh, we do expect um, grants to, to be annual, but uh, we're not sure yet of each annual focus uh, over time. So yeah, thanks for that, Wendy, for answering that. Uh, okay, so let me just keep going. Back to this, where we were here with the underserved. You know, again, just be mindful of what you're putting in your goals is something that then you can back up with your project plan. Uh, yes, because you don't want to leave the reviewers going, well, they said underserved, but I don't see it anywhere in here. And that will affect your rating. All right. Uh, back to project intent. The reviewers will evaluate how innovative the proposal pro the proposed project is, is addressing the chosen themes and intended impact. If you've made no statements about impact, or uh, how you've accomplished the goals, you're leaving it to the reviewer to guess. And anytime the reviewer guesses, um, you're not gonna get the full, likely not get the, get, get the full points available to you. Uh, the operational plan, again, by putting this logic model, that shows you where all you need to be uh, investing your efforts along the entire project plan, and then be able to adequately convey that in your narrative that shows you thought about the resources, you thought about the activities, what you would expect to see and what you uh, expect to, to deliver. And same with the uh, capacity to impl implement. If there's details missing about how all of this will be done and what you expect to get out of it, the assumption is gonna be it's, they can't go, they can't fill in the gaps on their, their own. They're gonna rate it accordingly and go on to the next project that might have more more of what they are looking for defined. This is it's a competitive game. You want your project to be viewed as as the the better uh, chance for success uh, with a specific type of success for the reviewers. Uh, also, I did want to highlight other resources we have available. All of this, you know, the logic model, the the uh, thinking through the review criteria. All of it is meant for you to be more competitive. We want to see more of these projects, but we want to see the projects in a way that allow, makes it easy for us to consider them for funding. Uh, unfortunately, it does then make it even more competitive. And sometimes a project will just fall below the cut line where we just ran out of funds. Um, but we're not the only grantor in the area. This process that we've described is something that you should be utilizing for all your proposals. Uh, I could say in the 82 that we received, I'd say maybe five or six of them, I could tell it was, uh, they just forwarded us a proposal for somebody else's grant. Uh, they didn't have the time to really customize it. We get, you know, there's a lot going on on your end too, uh, but that makes it very difficult for those to get reviewed uh, against all the other ones. So um, 
if worst case scenario, send it in if you hadn't gone through this. Uh, but uh, you know, definitely if you've got the time, logic model it out first. Uh, our landing page also has additional resources on our end. Uh, a lot of the federal programs will have similar resource pages available to that from here. We have a, a very specific checklist that we've defined that knocks through all the different pieces. It will ask you about the review criteria components. Did you do this? Did you do this? Um, it's not laid out like a logic model. It's more of a, of a, a multiple page checklist, but just another resource for you to use. Uh, and then additional resources. I did link here to uh, various different federal logic model websites that uh, there's a lot of information about this. So, you, you know, some of it is very complex, but there's a lot of just very basic walkthroughs. Feel free to, to check them out. Uh, and then there's also a link here to that, um, the sample uh, template that we provided. Uh, I want to continue to open it up to questions, but I did want to highlight that we do have another capacity building webinar planned on October 5th that's going to be provided by our friends at West Virginia University. Uh, there's a, a program there that's uh, geared towards helping communities apply for brownfield remediation funds. So their whole office at West Virginia University is designed to help people be more successful at going after brownfield remediation dollars. Uh, so because they're very, uh, uh, have a lot of skills in helping people with federal grant making, they're doing a presentation for us on the budgeting part of submitting a federal proposal. So make sure you take a look at that. And then we have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of other topics available on our YouTube playlists. So I know that was a lot, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot more we could get into on logic models, but hopefully that gives you a, a skeleton of, of how you could use it as a tool. And uh, yeah.